Uh, we're going to be, going to be talking about, uh, uh, in particular, three pretty unique antibodies. There's a lot of antibodies that are out there. What distinguishes these antibodies, I think you'll see um, throughout the, the talk. And to give you a heads up, this, this is a bit of a, of a menu to follow. 5A6, 2H4, and 311 are going to, going to be three of these antibodies that are going to be, be the, uh, the main characters. But one other aspect of this uh, work is, how do, we, how do we, there we go. Oh, so just click there is um, the aspect in which the collaboration, uh, it's, it's a global collaboration. And we, we like to say that in many ways, the sun sets on this project. There's someone that's work, working on it 24 hours a day. And it started in a, with a collaboration from Cheng Yi Wang, a former postdoctoral fellow in my lab, who's now an independent investigator at Star. A long-term collaboration with Yifan Cheng, where we've been working with, with understanding the use of antibodies um, to study challenging proteins for cryo-EM stem studies, recent collaboration with the Shish Mango. So one, one of the quick questions why we're coming in an antibodies and one of the aspects, there, there's a number of other ways to get at these, these antibodies. In vitro selection of antibodies against antipathies from a naive combinatorial library, which is what we did in this case, can, can yield various classes of antigen-specific bind, binders distinct from those that are evolved from natural infection. And instead of going after, it, it's not going after patient-derived antibody, antibodies as approach. Some of those are in the clinic. It's just the going after recombinant antibodies. You can go after um, unique conformationally selective antibodies, where the antigen in this case, which is, which is the spike protein and its folded state, was able to be panned against to identify these antibodies. And this is some, something we've been doing with, with EFON for over a decade now, getting antibodies to conformationally selective states of a particular antigen. And those antibodies serve as unique for dish markers and as, as important tools to trap, trap particular confirmation states. Now, to apply that to SARS-CoV-2, you can see in this, this paper from Steve Gamblin group that just shows the pathway of infection and, and how ACE2 can lead to these con con changes in the con confirmation landscape as the ACE2 binds to the receptor. So to just start at 12 o'clock on this, on, on, on this mechanism, where the erect structure of the, the trimeric spike, spike team is shown in, in its closed state, and then looking down on it, face down, those three re receptor ring domains, and once they engage the, the receptor, the ACE2, you, you get confirmational changes in that as you load eventually the three receptors onto the surface of that spike, spike team, to lead to eventual infection. So using um, that structure, looking at, looking at how the human ACE2 binds to the receptor binding domain, defines the, the surface that validated that as a therapeutic target. And there's been this rush of antibodies to, to affect that. So we then use this as our search engine, basically through a library of Naive individuals, where 22 healthy individuals donated their, their, their BBMCs, an extremely large library of 30 billion were identified, displayed the heavy and light chains of those antibodies on the surface of phage. And then using you, you, the receptor binding, binding domain as the, as the beat to go into the, that library to identify those confirmationally selective antibodies. This panel just shows 27 of those looking at the ability to not only bind to RBD, but to block A2. And that was a key point in terms of functional screening. We were looking for those bodies could potently and effectively block that binding. So from that 2027, we chose six that looked the most, the most promising, and then did the subsequent studies to narrow it down to the 6X clone that showed strong inhibition of the inter interaction these two do. So those six, we then did more biophysical physical characterization of them and looking at, looking at both the fragment antibody, the FB, as well as the full IgGG get binding constants. 
and as many of the other antibodies that are out there, we showed that we could find ones that were that the fab itself is in the nanomolar range, about single digit to double double digit nanomolar. You go to the IgG, then have ones that are picomolar, and that's expected because you get the vividity of the, of the IgG. So no significant surprise here. They were quite potent. We knew that they blocked BAS2. And then if you look at the sensorams of the, the bile interferometry, you can see they have, they have pretty good rates. And when you go from the FAB to the IgG, they have significant again, hang time. They're really binding on that receptor to block. But then we started seeing things that's, that distinguish these antibodies from others. And you follow that red line, which is the, the 5A6 of those three I showed on that first slide. 5A6 is our lead compound that we wanted to really, really study uh, because of its unique properties. We wanted to see how it bound onto the receptor binding domain relative to the other. In other words, epitope binding them. So, so we found the 5A6 onto the tip, tip, and we looked at initially initi just the receptor binding domain binding to it. So that, that's the first part of this curve. Then you go in and, and you look at whether the other the antibodies, the other six antibodies bound, bound a similar way. And you can see in this case, all of them but, but one bound to, to overlapping epitopes. And, and 3D11 and 5, 5, 6 were two distinct binding sites onto that receptor binding domain that then blocked ACE2. So then of course, we needed to see how do they work on, work on the nerves. So, so in terms of the rows here, the top row is, is the testing those, those antibodies. In case we narrowed it down to five, five those five antibodies down against the pseudovirus versus the live virus. And then in the columns, this is the, the FIGG and this is the FABs. And as expected, the pseudovirus, we're, get, we're getting good infection, as you should, because we're blocking that to binding. And then we go to the live virus. You're getting greater potency because you have a, a replicating virus in this case. So you're going to get greater potency in terms of the EEC50s. But you can see that red line, is 5 a 6 is one that's dis distinguished from, from all the others, be it in lab form or in the full IgG form. 5A6 is really standing out differently compared to 3D11 and 2H4, which, which we're going to get into structural reasons. All right, another way to show that is clearly if you plot the log of the bind, bind affinity, this is that ability to block the survivors. And you see there's a pretty linear correlation in terms of affinities versus potency in the survivors, except for 5A6, which, which really stands out really is quite different than the rest. And that versus us as a fab, you can see how, how clearly the three to the, the quaternary structure of this is, is really going to turn out to be, to be important. So this is where the work, work was, uh, was, it was put out on, on bioarchives back in March of, uh, of last year where we, we had that structure. And then it's taken us to this to actually get, get uh, published uh, where it is now in cell, cell. and Fon's going to take it over and show the, show the rest of the story. Uh, thanks, Charlie. Charlie, and thanks. Uh, uh, let me continue the, the story. So, um, this uh, show Char Charlie audio so far that uh, the characterization of all, all this uh, neutralization antibody. So, there's another aspect I want, want to be into the picture here. that is the syncytial formation. And it's just a brief, brief uh, um mentioned about the, the um, life cycle of viral infection. And as the virus get infected cell after, after um, replicating the uh, virus, when the spawn often from the cell, what also left in this infected uh, cell was, was that a lot of spike protein actually being left, left on the surface of the plasma membrane of the infected cell. And this uh, they, uh, uh, left over spike protein I can do something bad. That is the, the to trigger the, the uh, cell cell fusion, the so-called syncytia, yeah. because then, then this uh, um, spike protein can directly interact with, with the, to the receptor of the neighboring cell and then trigger the cell uh, membrane fusion uh, it form from this giant sort of, sort of, this is called the syncytia. And then the syncytia has already been linked to the, uh, um, the, the COVID-19 uh, um, uh, COVID patient 
particularly in the later stage of disease with the, with, with the, with the tissue damage. And so we saw that once, once we have this antibody, we also see whether how the antibody influence or inhibit it or, 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 or to do with the synthesia. And then to our surprise, uh, and then um, the, the 5A6, but this is the, the assay, basically the, that makes uh, the, um, the um, viral cell that which is uh, uh, transfected with the, with spike GFP and mix it with, with the one with the out, out and to then uh, you see the uh, monitor the synthesia formation, basically cell membrane fusion um, from this, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the neighboring form uh, fused together. together. And uh, in the presence of a uh, 56 IgG, we, we can see that there is an inhibition of the synthesia form. This is a without the IgG and, and just by using the trypsin to, to uh, trigger the synthesia. And then uh, in the presence of IgG, 56 IgG, there's an inhibited synthesia. However, I was surprised that 311 is also a very potent neutralizing and it, it actually promotes the synthesia formation. So this is the dose response of this uh, uh, IgG. Uh, uh, this is a fab IgG on synthesia form for may see that a 5, 5 or 6 inhibit the synthesia and a 3, 3 to 11 uh, promotes the synthesia. So this is us and together with what Tari showed you that it to a number of questions that we try, try to address from structure. These are basically, okay, we know that uh, Antibody, uh, um, this this polarization antibody can compete the, for the for the ACE2 binding. It's a way of of uh, neutralizing, right? So, but then what is the really interesting that the determinants of a uh, um, neutralizing potency, and uh, certainly this bind affinity is the one thing, and uh, but also uh, um, what is the uh, the stru structure is influence influence structure, particularly if at this curve here, which Charlie showed you, really, this epi epi bind. You can uh, binning, you can see that, see that the C11 is binding to a diff different epi with the other uh, um, with all, all the other fab. So the other fabs they have a overlapping epitope. But particularly like the five, five and six, which is another epitope, like a two, two H4, and then these are have overlapping um, uh, um, epitope. But then if you look at the correlation of a uh, uh, a binding affinity versus a, a, a potency that's uh, 3D uh, um, 586 really stands out. And then also, uh, uh, so also the question is like showing that uh, even the bind affinity has a, has a comparable, but the potency very different. different. So what is the reason for that? And also more, more in this, uh, what, what is the mechanism of antibody but binding induces this seizure form formation? So this is also the particular in of the 3D lab. So for those purposes, we turn into the structure. Why we use the stru structure? And, and then it's like Richard Feynman made famous uh, statement back in, in 1959. He gave a, it's a famous lecture uh, that is, uh, there's plenty of room at him. He, he says that it's very easy, easy to answer many uh, fundamental biological questions. And he just said that you just look at the things, basically to look at the structure and then see, see how this works. Here we use single particle particle volume, and then to look look at the structure of the spike app complex, and then the the, the um, this this is strategy was really, really facilitated by by the technological breakthrough in the last uh, the five ten years in the in the single particle crowd here, and uh, uh, you can see that in during this uh, 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 um, um, outbreak break of COVID nineteen, and the, the first uh, viral gene was released. In the January 10th of 2020, we see literally about five weeks structure of the spike protein is already been released. So this really showcased the power of a single particle algae and now really changed the structure of biology. Now we can rapidly determine the structures of a, 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 a protein, protein press and this enables the structure of a, a Spike protein and uh, on, on the uh, on, on structure here, here. So in this, as uh, Charlie showed, showed it, we actually determine structures of a number of uh, all, all these uh, antibodies, which is a uh, three kind of characteristic one. Five six is the more potent one, and then three D eleven, which has different uh, abit uh, abit bind and abit abit of the five six six, and uh, uh, um, and there's one in the mid middle H four. We determine structure of those. If you only look at the structure of the 
fab bind to the uh, uh, RPD domain and showing here. You, you can already understand in some of the level that, for example, here, this is the ACE2 binding site. And uh, you can see, see the 5A6 to a H4 directly competes with the ACE2 binding uh, uh, epitope. So the epitope has a certain level over, uh, overlap. And the 3D11 binds in the site, does not directly overlap in the, in the epitope, but then it are aesthetically competing with the two right, binding. So, so this is cons consistent with a lot of uh, uh, um, that showing the potency. This is a list of a number of which published antics. You can see the binding side, the general exception is that uh, the, the, the closer they are over overlapping with two binding, the potency is high, higher. This seems like it's consistent with, with, with that notion. However, we also see that a certain, a certain instances, for example, here, that one, that one can see in our case, that the 2H4 and 5A6 have a both, both actually 2H4 is even more overlapping with the A2. But 5V6, the potency is higher. So this is the question we want to answer and to answer why. why. This is indeed in, in, in addition look at the, in, um, the binding of, of a fab to the RPE. We want to look at the all architecture of the, of the site protein in the presence of uh, um, um, antibody binding. So if we look at the structure of 2H4 bind to the spike protein. Out of for ones, we're actually able to look at a number of structures here. In the, in the, there's three different com conformations which we actually can capture from the sample. For this one that we can show here that two H4 can bind to one RPD, one, one two H4 binds to one RPD. This RPD could be, be in the opposition. And then you can also know with that the two uh, two H4 binds to two different RPD of the one. Uh, and one is up position, position is in the down position. And we also, also can see three uh, uh, um, uh, uh, four to three different RBD position and two in and one in down position. This is in a way that very similar as the ACE2 binding that changes the 3D combination of the spy protein uh, um, in, in, in the way that she can post them further into the upper position. Now, 3D11, however, is different because 3D11 only found that it's one structure with, with uh, um, three, 3D11 bound to three uh, uh, um, RPD or in the upper position because this binding mode, the um, binding is incompatible with the uh, um, uh, RPD in the down position. So it only bind, binds the RPD in the upper, upper position and it really, really locks them all in the upper, upper position. And then further, you can look at the individual bind. You can, you can see that the um, uh, the binding of the uh, this three D eleven pushes the RPD further towards an even more old position than the ACE two binding. And then so this this is what we call it is a more more su um, um, super super old position. And, and that's the three D eleven. The architecture shows this one. Now five A six, which is the most of the potent one, we 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 show here binds in very unique way. And then that we all see at least two uh, um, 5A66 bind to the RBDD, and they always bind to the neighboring one of the three, if have two, they always bind to the neighboring one. However, there's always one in the upper, upper position, one in the down position. So we also have the three binding there, but they're always two neighboring one, they are in the one in the upper position, one in the down position. And, and uh, furthermore, if, if we detail the, the one uh, 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 5A6 binding to the ACE2 to uh, run into the RBD in the down position, the not only lock this RBD in the down position, but it's a, a there's a side of that. It's also leaning against the, the neighboring on the upper position. So there's a secondary theory in this, which, which I've never seen any, any other binding in this one. And this is the only one that so far, so far we see done in this one. And we believe this is, this is the way it locks the RPE in the down position. And so this is, is a way that this particular fan makes this a, uh, is much potent uh, initialization than the, all the other uh, um, 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 fabs. And furthermore, and then Charlie also, also showed you that the, the fab binding and the IgG are different. 
And in this way, this uh, five by six, one can see, can see if we're putting in the structure of IgG into there, we can see that also, uh, so, um, we didn't get high enough resolution, but we can still inter interpret the data in a way that a person of IgG bind, the IgG bind in a very, very similar way that it locks one in the up position, one down position. So putting all this, all this together, we can try to understand what ha happened with all this uh, uh, um, um, fat bind into that. So, so this again, back, back to first uh, um, the, the cycle, uh, um, ACE2 binding, binding, that you can see that uh, the spike protein is in the uh, uh, transient, it is a, uh, they're all closed in the one on position. And then upon ACE2 binding, binding to the binding, it locks, it only binds to the upper position, but then it locks the first in the upper position, promotes the second, second um, RP to come up and binds the binds second ACE2 and then third one, and this finally, Leads to the shedding of the FS1, and then uh, so, so that enable the uh, uh, spike protein to transition into the to the pollution states. Here. Now, in the presence of of, of two H4, it binds somewhat similar as the H2 two bind, and then the, in terms of, term of the formation, you know, a uh, uh, landscape, it does something very similar as H2 binding here, but it directly can compete for H2 binding. So this is the neutralization pathway. But for 3D11. It actually still competing with the ACE2 bind, but it puts the entire conformation directly into this uh, 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 um, all opposition, basically locked into to a conformation that is compatible with a three uh, um, ACE2 bond position. And uh, the, uh, then five ACE6 somewhat totally different, which locks one to a conformation that is incompatible with, with this uh, ACE2 bond. And also lock the uh, uh, one of the RPG at least in the in the uh, in the close commission. And we think that the, the way to lock the RPG in the down position, basically trapping the spike protein in a diffusion state. state. And this is the one one of the reasons that, that um, make this five is they see most potent than uh, uh, than the other. Five. And, and this may be also the reason why this 5 is 6 can inhibit the syncytia, but not, not the 311, because it is really direct, directly putting this one into the conformation, very similar uh, uh, as the H2 binding conformation. So this is the, uh, the overall story of, of what we want to share today. And then also, as, as Charlie mentioned from the beginning, this is a large co collaboration, so uh, uh, many different labs uh, globally. And uh, uh, we're happy to share it uh, with you our story here. And now uh, we're happy to answer the question. All right, Yifan, thank you for that amazing stuff. Beautiful pictures. So I'm, I uh, needed to understand one thing. So the antibody that actually enhances syncytia formation is really interesting, but I didn't, is that, does that antibody, is that an example of an antibody that is enhancing infection or was it neutralizing? And and no, Steve, it, it actually blocks, blocks infection. So one of the take home messages is, is that all antibodies that block infection are necessarily going to be good. So some of them, if they actually facilitate this binding of the, the spike protein to a neighboring cell, that's actually going to be something that uh, uh, with a number of publications that are com coming out showing the connection between syncytia formation and damage in the lungs and the heart tissue, it's something that we're actually starting to screen for antibodies that, that actually are effective at blocking infection, but also effective at blocking syncytia formation. It's right. adding, adding an aspect to the screening. So the question is, what's different? Uh, you know, what is the antibody doing that's different in syncytia versus virus entry, since, you know, you would think they were both fusion events. Right, right. And I think that that last slide where it shows that 5 ACE can pull things off in this pre-fusion trapping state, state, this is the sort of thing that you'd, you'd like those antibodies that, that can tie up that has receptor binding domains in such a way that it can bind them both up and down, down and that locks, locks it into place. Whereas there's that allow it to, to it through this and actually facilitate that present pre presentation of, of the receptor binding domain in ACE2 to the next cell. Right, 
Right, but so it's interesting that you can promote syncytia fusion and not and yet not virus because presumably whatever you're doing, you know, is is a right. is a non exactly. non infectious event. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very neat. Okay. Sorry about the the troubles with with the uh, with the echo. Yeah, no, I, I apologize to our listeners, but I think, you know, we got it. I think we got the drift <laughs> in spite of yeah. that. All right. Well, if there are other questions, people can put them in the box. We'll pass them on. Um, oops. I don't see any raised hands. Let me look. Yifan and Charles, I, I have a, a, a super simple question. Um, what, what is the physical event that's actually driving syncytia in these cases? or in, in any of these cases. Yeah, um, Eric, Eric, in terms yeah. of the, the drive, I, I'd, I'd say uh, um, if we go back, back. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be the post-fusion state actually mediating membrane fusion, presumably, yeah. Right, so in terms of that infected cell, where there's going to be spike protein left out on the surface of yeah. that infected cell. All of those spike proteins are used to, to package the exiting virion. There, there are some that are left behind. And so, and so those spike proteins are now just sitting there ready to interact with any other, other cell, in this case, that's going to have an ACE2 receptor. So if that's the case, case then you're going to get fusion, fusion and out infection to, to these multi nucleated monsters. And so it's the presumption here that when you interact with the, I can't remember the number, uh, the, the 3D11 antibody, right. that you can concurrently interact with the ACE2 receptor? Right, right, exactly. And so if, if you look at that, that structure, 3D11 is, is binding to the side of the receptor binding, binding domain allowing it to still interact with ACE2. It's causing a conformational um, inhibition of ACE2 binding, but it can also facilitate binding, in this case, with syncytia sy formation. So in a way, the, the, the CD11 really brings the spike protein to a conformation comparable to the first, first the post-fusion states. And if a virus uh, uh, floating around, it probably just doesn't matter. But once you block the ACE2 binding, it does, does not interest the, the whole, whole cell anymore. But when the two, the two cells are too close to each other, and then that could be a, uh, a reason that, that which triggers uh, um, for, for the answer, this kind of interaction with the neighboring cell and then with the fusion within the neighboring cell. Yeah. 